um, Warren Clayton Green, Cindy and I at Glenview Station here, that is in the Waitomo Caves area. We've got 870 hectares. We breed and finish both beef cattle and lambs. On the farm here we have Myra ash soils, a lot of limestone rock, sandstone of course. It's Waitomo is a high rainfall area, been tending west on the North Island, so we have to manage our pastures and our soil fairly carefully. Since we've been here, we've changed our management techniques. We had, when we arrived, quite high stocking numbers. In breeding stock, we've changed that to fattening, finishing and breeding, which has meant we've needed better pasture lengths and more of a rotation grazing system. Your pasture length obviously stops as much runoff and heavy rainfall, but it also has a, a lot to do with the numbers you're running. With the breeding finishing, I find it's more enjoyable farming because you're seeing your progeny to its end result. With having less numbers because you're finishing, you're more adaptable in dry or really wet conditions because you've got options, not being too heavily stocked with one type of livestock. In the winter time, if it's extreme wet, we manage the oil pasture and therefore our soils by shifting stock according to the conditions. It's pretty much the same in the summer if it's dry. Obviously we're trying to get rid of stock as best we can, but we are managing those pastures the same. I don't try and chew it out too much if it's getting quite dry. They are moved and we change our management, not so hugely, but on time. Um, we have six mobs of breeding cows counting our heifers and they are rotated in their different systems. So we don't overly put big numbers in a paddock and they seem a lot happier, especially the younger stock do very well like that. We've done a farm plan. Um, we have pretty much a farm plan anyway, so it wasn't hard in the way we manage things and I keep a record of stuff. So the fat farm plan's there, we just put it on paper. The benefit of it, I think, was just knowing from hearing from other people that you're on the right track. In, in our fattening country in the front, we have half the paddocks have got a trop water system as much as we can. In the back country, we've put three water systems in to get the water up into the paddocks higher, a lot higher, so the stock don't have to go down to the streams to get water. And that seems to be pretty popular with the stock. They certainly use those troughs. Areas that have needed tension. The first thing we did is plant a real steep block in the front of the farm with pine trees and blackwoods. At the present we're putting poplar poles around 300 a year and so I think that'll be an asset in the future and that's ongoing. As well as that in the past we've fenced off a third of the farm, some native bush. Um, quite a bit of that is QE2. I prefer natives if I can for those small areas because they fit into the aesthetics of the place. I think aesthetics is fairly important. The poplars will be aesthetically attractive as well as holding the hills so it's a win-win for me to look at the place and also the soil. Cindy and I really enjoy our farm. It certainly makes going to bed at night pretty easy. The more you've done the more you'll end up doing because it's quite addictive and it's enjoyable. Um, seeing the end results and the next generation presumably will, will carry on with it.